In this video, we're going to be building the first component for our pattern library, which is the button component. Now, we already have a demo component, but we're going to be replacing this with our own custom button, which will return either a button element or a anchor element, depending on what props we pass it. Now, I'll be guiding you through how we build this button. By the end of the video, we'll have a very basic button, but in future videos, we'll extend this with styles and icons. So to get started with building our button, we're first going to scrape out any existing stories. So we're going to get rid of the emoji story and we're going to replace the text story with basic button. And we're going to remove the on click function and we're just going to replace the text with basic button. So when we go back to our browser, we've only got basic button. And we're going to go into our button component and add a couple more props to our button component. <laughs> so we've got children, but we also want to bring in href and we want to bring in on click. Now we'll bring the on click onto the button and assign it. So if we pass in our button a on click function, then it will run anytime we click on the button. So we'll create a new button story. We'll call it function button. And this will be a button on click. We'll say alert hello. And function button will be the text. So if we go back into our storybook, we, oh, okay. So it ran the function before we clicked on it, but the function button is there. So let's see what happened. Alert, hello. On click, alert, hello. So we'll do E, we'll do button clicked. Button clicked. We're just going to write a function which will help document the button was clicked. See if this helps. Cool. So it doesn't automatically run now. When we click on function button, we get hello. Um, so that's the on click is getting passed and the children prop. But now we have the href prop. Now, href doesn't work on button because you shouldn't be passing a button a href a button is for an action event or for interacting with a page without navigating uh you should only be using href when you're navigating from a page to a new page or to an id on a page so what we can do is we can create a dynamic html button or a dynamic HTML element based on the props passed to a button component, which is the beauty of React. So instead of immediately returning a button every time, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our component and we're going to put return button at the bottom. Um, actually, no, we're going to say if no href is available, return button. And then if we get past that point, then we'll return an anchor tag with the href href. And we'll have the children returned inside of the anchor. So in our story, we can now write linked button. And we'll pass our href prop to our button as root. And we'll say, linked button. Now when I go to the linked button, you can see it's styled like an anchor tag. And if we inspect the element, you can see that we're actually getting returned an anchor with the HF root. We went to button, we have a button being returned. So we now have a button component, which is styled consistently, well, not styled yet, but returning a dynamic HTML element that we will be styling consistently. So you can use a button as a link or as a normal button. Um, 
depending on if you've passed the href attribute will depend on what element is returned to our DOM. So we now have three button stories. We have the basic button, function button, and linked button. Uh, we're swapping out markup. The only additional thing we could do is we could install a package called prop types. So if I stop uh, storybook and run npm i prop hyphen types, what this will do is it will install a npm package, um, which will allow us to define what attributes our button will come to expect. So if we go back into our button file and we import prop types from prop types, then underneath our declaration of what a button is, we can write button dot prop types camel case equals and then an object which has three attributes. One will be children, which will be a node, and it will be required. And then we'll have href, which will be a string, and we'll have on click, which will be a function. And that's it. And as you can see, my Visual Studio Code editor picked up that we can just automatically import these instead of saying prop types dot node. And we can get rid of the import prop types altogether. I like to import in alphabetical order because I'm neurotic like that. And now we have our prop types defined. And if we go ahead and run Storybook again, what this essentially does is it implements some form of type defined language, which says, you know, prop types children node is required it means that anytime we create a button, we have to pass it a children uh, or children because that's what it's, it's expecting. <laughs> um, but the href is optional, but it is going to expect a string. And then the on click will be a function, but it's not required. So we can use the button with or without a href, with or without an on click, but will always require some form of uh, text or node inside of the button component itself. And yeah, so we'll actually be using the prop types that we've just defined later on to help further document our component. But for now, we've got our components rendering as buttons and anchors and dynamically swapping out based on the props that we pass it. In the next video, we're going to be covering how we will style our button. And we'll be doing this using styled components and tightly coupling the styles to the individual React component, and then using props to influence the styles that we're going to be generating for our button.